In mathematics, specifically functional analysis, the von Neumann bicommutant theorem relates the closure of a set of bounded operators on a Hilbert space in certain topologies to the bicommutant of that set. In essence, it is a connection between the algebraic and topological sides of operator theory. The formal statement of the theorem is as follows Von Neumann bicommutant theorem let M be an algebra of bounded operators on a Hilbert space H, containing the identity operator and closed undertaking adjoints. Then the closures of M in the weak operator topology and the strong operator topology are equal, and are in turn equal to the bicommutant M of M. This algebra is the von Neumann algebra generated by M. There are several other topologies on the space of bounded operators, and one can ask what are the asterisk algebras closed in these topologies. If M is closed in the norm topology then it is a C asterisk algebra, but not necessarily a von Neumann algebra. One such example is the C asterisk algebra of compact operators on an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. For most other common topologies the closed asterisk algebras containing one are still von Neumann algebras, this applies in particular to the weak operator, strong operator, asterisk strong operator, ultraweak, ultrastrong, and asterisk ultrastrong topologies. It is related to the Jacobson density theorem. Topic. Proof Let H be a Hilbert space and L H the bounded operators on H consider a self-adjoint unital subalgebra M of L H, this means that M contains the adjoints of its members, and the identity operator on H The theorem is equivalent to the combination of the following three statements I CLW M M I I C L S M C L W M I I I M C L S M, where the W and S subscripts stand for closures in the weak and strong operator topologies, respectively. Topic proof of I by definition of the weak operator topology for any x and y in H, the map T is continuous in this topology. Therefore, for any operator O and by substituting once y O y and once x ox, so is the map T T x O y minus T O x y equals O T x y minus T O x y. Display style T to Langle T x O caret asterisk y wrangle Langle tox y wrangle equals Langle O T x y wrangle Langle tox y wrangle. Let S be any subset of L H and S its commutant. For any operator T not in S, is nonzero for some O in S and some X and Y in H by the continuity of the above mentioned mapping, there is an open neighborhood of T in the weak operator topology for which this is nonzero, therefore this open neighborhood is also not in S. Thus S is closed in the weak operator, i.e. S is weakly closed. Thus every commutant is weakly closed, and so is M, since it contains M, it also contains its weak closure. <laughs> Proof of I -I. This follows directly from the weak operator topology being coarser than the strong operator topology. For every point x in CLS M, every open neighborhood of x in the weak operator topology is also open in the strong operator topology and therefore contains a member of M. Therefore, x is also a member of CLW M. Topic proof of I -I -I fix x element of M. We will show x element of CLS M. Fix an open neighborhood U of x in the strong operator topology. By definition of the strong operator topology, U contains a finite intersection U H1, epsilon 1, U H n, epsilon n of subbasic open sets of the form U H epsilon equals O element of L H O X H zero. 
Fix H in H consider the closure C L MH of M H equals M H M element of M with respect to the norm of H and equipped with the inner product of H it is a Hilbert space being a closed subspace of a Hilbert space H, and so has a corresponding orthogonal projection which we denote PP is bounded, so it is in L H. Next we prove, lemma. P element of M, proof. Fix x element of H then P x element of C L M H, so it is the limit of a sequence O N H with on in M for all N. Then for all T in M, ton is also in M H and thus its limit is in C L M H. By continuity of T since it is in L H and thus Lipschitz continuous, this limit is T P X. Since T P X element of C L M H, P T P X. Topic TPX. From this it follows that PTP TP for all T in M. By using the closure of M under the adjoint, we further have for every T in M and all X, Y element of H X T P Y equals X P T P Y equals P X T P Y equals T P X P Y equals P T P X Y equals T P X Y equals P X T Y equals X P T Y Display style Langle x, TPY, Wrangle equals Langle x, PTPY, Wrangle equals Langle PX, TPY, Wrangle equals Langle T carrot, asterisk PX, PY, Wrangle equals Langle PT carrot, asterisk PX, Y, Wrangle equals Langle T carrot, asterisk PX, Y, Wrangle equals Langle PX, Ty, Wrangle equals Langle x, PTY, Wrangle Thus TP Topic PT and P lies in M by definition of the bicommutant XP PX since M is unital H element of MH hence XH Topic XPH PXH element of CL MH Thus for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists t in m with xh minus th topic non unital case an algebra m acting on h is said to act non degenerately if for h in h mh topic Zero implies H. Zero. If M acts non-degenerately and is a sub C asterisk algebra of L H, it can be shown using an approximate identity in M that the identity operator I lies in the strong closure of M. Therefore, the conclusion of the bicommutant theorem still holds. <laughs>